All right, so here's our first change of variables example. We're going to start with a case where the transformation is, in fact, already linear, okay? So the derivative matrix will actually be just an ordinary matrix of constants, um, but we're going to work through the details anyway. Um, now, the way you want to understand this change of variables formula here, right, the way you want to understand the role of this Jacobian, this, this function here, is that you're going to start over here in the UV space. You're going to apply a transformation, right? Each little bit of area over here in the UV space is going to be stretched or shrunk by a certain factor to produce a little bit of area over here in the XY space. The stretch factor is the Jacobian, right? So it plays this kind of mediating role here that you can think of it two ways, that dA is the Jacobian times du dV. That's one way to think about it, right? Or you can think about this function over here, right? Here you're thinking about putting the Jacobian in to modify the height, right? So remember, you can think about a double integral as, as your calculating volume under a surface, right? So, you know, you're calculating volume, it's going to be area of the base times the height, right? And so there's kind of, you know, there's two ways to think about it. You can either, if you stretch the base, the area of the base by a certain amount and then multiply by a height, that's going to give you a volume. But you would get the same volume if you left the base alone and you stretch the height by the same factor, right? Because area times height, it doesn't matter which side of that product you put the stretch factor on, you'll get the same total volume. So what we're doing here is, is we're trying to calculate that stretch factor. And the nice thing about this example is that the region is a parallelogram. This is not a region that you would want to do without a change of variables, right? Um, whether you're doing y first or x first, you could see that you'd have to break this region up into several pieces. You'd need, I think, at least three pieces to do the integral. Um, so that's a bit of work, right? Maybe more work than you want to do. But you could think of, well, this, this big parallelogram, right? You could break it down into a whole bunch of little parallelograms that are, that are kind of, you know, similar to the one that you started with, right? Um, same, same angles, just scaled down, right? And so you want to think of this as coming from, right, from some rectangle in the UV plane. So we've got, so we got two things to do. We've got to figure out what that rectangle should be, and we've got to figure out what the transformation should be, right? So we've got to come up with two things. The region, D, and the transformation, T, that gets us from here to there. So one of the ways that you can do this is you start looking at the boundary and you start thinking about, well, what are the equations that define my boundary, right? What are the, what are the curves that are involved? So let's see. Um, this line here is, is equal, this is x equals 2y, right? And another way I might write that is that this is saying x minus 2y equals 0. Okay. This one up here, well, it's the same thing. It's just being shifted up a little bit, right? Up here, uh, this one is going to be x minus 2y equals, what's it going to be? Well, let's see. Let's just look at either of the two points here. If I do x minus, uh, minus 2y, what do I get? I get um, minus 5. If I do x minus 2y here, minus 5. There we go. Okay. So, so we can describe this region. We could say that minus 5, right? So x minus 2y is between minus 5 and 0. Um, what about the other sides? Well, this is y equals 3x, and we might write that as, um, as 3x minus y equals 0. Okay. What about this side, right? Well, this is going to be, it's the same slope, it's just a different intercept. So this side is going to be 3x minus y equals, well, Let's pick other point, either point and see. 3x minus y, so 6 minus 1, 5, right? Uh, 9 minus 4, 5. Okay, so then 0 is, so I have this, 3x minus y 
less than or equal to 5. Okay, so now what we do is we say, hey, let's, um, let's let that be u. Let's that be b, v. Okay, so now we know over here that, uh, that we're working with the following inequalities, right? And we see that we do indeed have a rectangle. Right. If you don't like the fact that u goes from minus 5 up to 0, if you think it should have gone from 0 to 5, that's fine. Change the definition of u, right? It is 2y minus x, right? Then it would go from 0 to 5. But there's, no, there's no single way of doing this. There's lots of possibilities you could come up with. Um, this is one of them. Now, the other thing you might notice, you might say, hey, super convenient. That's u. Ha. Huh. Good. All right. Now, how do you carry out the change of variables? All right. Well, we want to go from here to there. We need the transformation t. And, and so the problem is that right now, what we've got is we don't have the transformation. We've got the inverse. We've, we've done this. We've said that uv is, well, it's t inverse of xy. And we've defined that inverse transformation by x minus 2y and 3x minus y. How do we invert this transformation? Well, we can, uh, we can think about trying to actually invert a matrix or do something like that. Um, or we can just solve a good old system of equations, right? Now, I'll, I'll show you another way to do this before we end the example. Uh, it's going to turn out that we, there, there, are some, there are some shortcuts, but let's Let's do it the long way first, just so we kind of have a better feel for what's going on. All right. So you might notice that if I did um, 3u minus v, what would I, what would I get? I would get um, 3x. So 3u would be 3x minus 6y. All right. Subtract. 3x minus y, I get minus 5y. Okay, so I can solve for y here. y is minus 3 fifths u plus 1 fifth v. Similarly, I could say, hey, what if I did u plus 2v? Um, then I would have x minus 2y plus, um, plus, no, um, I want minus, don't I? Sorry. u minus 2v. So minus 3x minus 2y. And... What do I get? Well, 2y minus minus 2y, those cancel out. x minus 3x, I get minus 2x. So I can divide by everything by minus 2, and I get that x is minus 1 half u plus v. Okay, we got it, all right? By the way, uh, let me know if I, if I mess up these calculations. I think so far we're, we're doing okay. So this gives me my transformation. My transformation T of uv is given by minus 1 half u plus v and then minus 3 fifths u plus 1 fifth v. The derivative of that transformation is going to be, so we do the u derivatives and then the v derivatives, minus 1 half, minus 3 fifths, 1, 1 fifth. The Jacobian is the determinant of that thing. So it's going to be, let's see, minus... 1 over 10 going that way, minus minus, so plus 
3 fifths, which is 6 tenths. So 6 over 10 minus 1 over 10, 5 over 10. Jacobian comes out to be 1 half. Um, by the way, uh, remember that the determinant doesn't care about transposes. So don't worry about whether you do the u's going down and then the v's going down, or do the u's go across and the v's go across. You're going to get the same answer either way, right? So don't worry about mixing it up. You're going to get the same answer either way. So then what you get is, well, let's see. Let's do the integral. Let's set it up up here. I'm running out of space. I didn't plan this one so well. Uh, what can you do? So, um, v goes from 0 to 5, u goes from minus 5 to 0, and if I think about, you know, here's my function, right, my, let's do this down here. I mean, we already know it's u, okay, so let's put it in, I'll put it in, it's u. It's, it's u, okay, times, so, so u is this part, f of t of u v is u. Now I have to put in my Jacobian. It's already positive, don't need to worry about the absolute value. So times one half, and then du, dv. Right? That integral is a piece of cake. Maybe you can almost do it in your head. Uh, I'm not going to try to do it in my head, but maybe you could. Right? It's doable. Not so bad. Right? It's a pretty simple function. You're integrating over a rectangle. I think I can let you all finish it off from here. It's reasonably straightforward. Uh, one of the things you might notice is you might say, hey, well, shouldn't I have, uh, shouldn't I have done this like f of t of u of v? What, you know, what, what do I get if I actually go through the, you know, so my, let's, let's see, f of x, y was x minus 2y. So f of t of u, v should be, well, I set x equal to, Let's make sure I didn't mess up when I solve my system. Minus one half u plus v. I'm going to be really embarrassed if I do, but well, you know, life happens. Minus two y. Y is three fifths u plus one fifth v. Oh yeah, I totally messed it up, didn't I? Because um, that doesn't come out to be u. I know it should be u. It's defined there. It's u. Ha ha ha. Let's see. Six fifths. Oh yeah, I screwed up. I screwed up over here probably. All right. Now you should never trust me again. We're 13 minutes in. I'm going to leave this video. Even though, even though I've obviously screwed up, I'm going to, I'm going to leave this video. I think it's instructive. Um, let's quickly try to find my mistake. Then I'll tell you how I could have avoided making this mistake, and we'll, uh, and we'll go from there, OK? Um, let's see. So here's my u, here's my v. So 3u is 3x minus 6y. v is 3x minus y. If I subtract those, 3x minus 3x cancels, minus 6y plus y minus 5y. That one's good. I did something wrong here, right? Let's see. So there's u, 2v, yeah. You, you've been screaming at the screen all along, haven't you? 2v, 2 times 3, everyone, is 6. So this minus 2 should have been a minus 5. So this should have been a, a minus 1 fifth. That should have been a 2 fifth. That's going to change things down here, right? One fifth, um, two fifths. So now this is going to be. Let's fix it. Um, minus one over twenty-five plus six over twenty-five. So five over twenty-five. So one over five. Okay, well, you know what, it could be worse. Hey, in terms of mistakes that I can correct by overwriting things, it could have been worse. Yeah, so minus 1 over 5 and 
2 over 5, and now you can see that, yes, 2 over 5v minus 2 over 5v, those cancel. 6 over 5u minus 1 over 5u, ha. It gives you u, as you would expect, right? You should be reasonably concerned if you don't. Um, this is a lot of work. How do you bypass it? Well, there's another kind of cool, useful theorem that you can use. I know I'm already, uh, I'm already on. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to work. I'm going to erase some of this. And I'm going to redo this with one more theorem at play that's going to save us a little bit of work. Let's see that in the next video.